Hi everyone, welcome back to Google School. We are in week four now, I can hardly believe it. Thank you for joining me again this week. Uh, I really am proud of all the work that you guys are doing. Keep up the great work. Uh, I put a picture on this first page of our mural at Indian Run just to remind you all to keep your school pride, keep your heads up, keep your work going. Um, I hope you had a great weekend if you celebrate Easter or the Passover. Um, I hope you had a wonderful celebration with your families. And um, remember, if you need to keep watching this video again, because you can't remember some of the things that I said, there'll be a link right here at the top of the page, along with links to Mrs. Miles's work as well. So, all right, let's get right into the work for this week. This is just for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Um, Mrs. Miles and I'll send out another document on Thursday for Thursday, Friday's work. Uh, first subject, health and well-being. You'll see a picture of two of your favorite related arts teachers on this page. Um, they are going to join us this Wednesday for a live class chat. I know our last two class chats have been a lot about you know business and housekeeping items that we needed to talk with you about, but this week we'd like to have a little bit more fun, make it a little bit more interactive, give you a chance to um, have a little bit more input. So not only will we have two spe special guests this week, but we'll be playing some games and doing some fun activities. So uh, make sure you set an alarm in your house somewhere on your phone. Um, on an iPad somewhere on an alarm clock in your house uh, for two o'clock if you're Mrs. Miles's homeroom and 2.30 if you're Mrs. Gould's homeroom. I'll send out one email just before two o'clock. So whether you're the 2.30 group or the two o'clock group, um, you'll all get one email. Just click on it at your time. Okay, so again, two o'clock for Miles, 2.30 for Gould, just like we've done the past few weeks. That seems to work well. Don't forget if you have Mrs. Leparo, um, for a teacher for some of your classes, you also have a chat on Wednesday morning at 11. Um, next, on Wednesday, so your second health assignment after you set that alarm <laughs> is to um, do a Google Form. One of the games that we're going to play on Wednesday um, requires you to fill out some things on this Google Form. So sometime before the chat on Wednesday, fill out this Google Form so that you can take part in our game. We're going to play a game called uh, two, three, two Truths and a Lie. It's where you basically make up or you have tell us two things that, about you that are true and one that's a lie and we try to decide which one is your lie. And usually people try to make it a little tricky. They maybe put something that um, people would think is a lie but actually is true about them. So um, I hopefully maybe you've played it before. It's kind of fun to play. So on the Google form, if you're not quite sure what to do, I did an example. So um, that's one of your assignments to do and try to do that Wednesday before the chat. If you don't get it done by Wednesday, we'll save you for next week, but we need some people to enter so that we can use your information for the game. Number three on the health um, part of our uh, to-do list this week is I told you last week that if you were feeling a little anxious or worried, I would post some small workout videos for you. So these are some small workout videos. There's one for each day and um, just a good way to start your day, try to get into a routine, get some of your energy out. And as usual, the Related Arts link is here if you get your work done and you want a little more. Lots of Related Arts great activities there. Let's go into the word study for this week then. For word study, uh, you have two assignments. Um, there's a video here. Uh, we're going to start studying in word study Greek and Latin roots. And so I want you to watch a video so that you know what those are. And then um, I gave you three different pages that you can do over the next couple of days. Um, we're gonna look at a prefix of PER. And I did a video for you to watch. So first watch my lesson about what to do, and then you can click here for the actual um, work. Okay, so watch the lesson first. Click here, I've done a little lesson for you on the word study concept and then click here to get the pages. You won't need a printer for the pages. You can simply do the work in your reader's writer's notebook. Okay, but watch my lesson first. All right, moving right along into reading. I hope that you are keeping up with the Black Cauldron because as I said before, we're gonna to continue to do uh, read one chapter a day with me or listen to one chapter a day with me. And then we will do some activities again based on the book. So make sure you're keeping up. I put a cool picture that I found um, online and um, some facts about the, the series over here that you can enjoy. I'm sure you noticed some of your favorite characters over here. At least this is one illustrator's um, rendition of what they might look like. 
Um, so keep listening. This is my YouTube channel. Keep listening. I've got 15, 16, and 17 already posted. So if you like to watch them all at once, great. If you want to do one per day, that's fine as well. Um, after you finish those three chapters, there is a Google form that you can do here on Wednesday um, about chapters 15, 16, and 17. It's a lot like the Google form that we did last week. So short, but just um, goes along with our read aloud book. Um, item number three, then, I sent you one Scholastic article for this week. It's about animal venom. It's called Toxic Discoveries. So I think you'll like that. Just click here to read that article. It's pretty cool. Remember, you're supposed to be reading 20 to 40 minutes per day. So whether you use Epic or Tumble Books or your own books at home, try to put in 20 to 40 minutes a day, especially in these days where it's really gloomy outside and there's not much to do anyway. So reading is one of the best things you can do to keep up with your education. Last but not least, um, you guys have worked so hard to get your narratives done, your mythology stories, and they turned out wonderfully. And as you know, whenever we finish a writing piece, we always share them. And I know some of you love to share them, and some of you are a little more shy to share them. So um, I've given you some different options with how you can share your writing piece this time. If you love to be in a video, you can be in a video. If you'd rather not be in a video, I've got some options for you too. So uh, I wrote here, now that you've finished writing your myths, it's time to share them. Um, this week, we're not going to be doing any recording. This week, you're just going to prepare what you will record next week. So here are some of the different options that you can choose to prepare your project so that you can film next week um, on Screencastify. So don't Screencastify this week. Wait till next week, but prepare this week for your video. So here are some things that you can do. I've given you a couple different options. Number one, as you know, you can make that picture book about your myth. I gave you all a picture, a blank picture book. I sent you home with it before the um, before we got out of school. If you lost that or your dog ate it or your little brother or sister <laughs> ran off with it, let me know. I can send you another one. But so one of your options is you can do that picture book. Um, if you love to draw, that's a great option. And um, you know, kids always ask, can I print pictures from online? Mm, no, um, that's plagiarism. I would much prefer you do your own illustrations because then it's your picture book and your story that you own. So um, if you have a printer, you can print out the words of your story and glue them on your pages. Okay. If you don't have a printer, you can just write your words on the pages. Okay. Um, don't record yourself reading your picture book yet. Just make your picture book this week as your visual. If you want to start practicing to record it, you can, but don't um, start recording yet this week. The second thing you can choose if you don't want to do a picture book and read it online, you can choose something called a common craft video. A common craft video is where you make illustrations and then as you're reading the story, you're putting the illustrations down uh, in front of the camera. So the great thing about common craft is we don't see you, we just see your pictures going down in front of the screen. Um, so if you don't want yourself to be in the video, but you want your story and your illustrations to be in the video, a common craft video is a great, um, great way for you to share your story. I have two different links um, that you can watch to see how a common craft video works. You can click on both of them. Um, a lot of kids love it because, again, you don't have to star in the video, just your illustrations and your voice will be there. So you don't need to record it this week if you decide to do Common Craft. All you need to do is work on your pictures and your words that you're going to put down in front of the screen. Um, you basically use words and pictures to tell your story. And all we see is your hands when you're laying down the different pictures as you're reading your story. So again, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, watch the two videos. Um, they do a good job of telling what a common craft is and then of showing an example of somebody doing a common craft video, okay? The third option you can choose is you can decide to do a puppet show with your myth. You could make puppets, whether it's out of socks or little um, characters on sticks or whatever. Um, you can then read your myth and your puppets are being shown as we hear your voice. So you could set up a little um, screen, prepare everything this week and then practice. And then next week you can film yourself 
on Screencastify. So um, some people love to do puppet shows, so that's a great option. The last thing you can choose is you could read your myth and have you and your family members kind of act out what's going on. Okay, so this is a tougher one. It requires, you know, family participation. So, um, you know, you may or may not have your family want to do something like this with you. So um, you don't have to get real elaborate with your costumes and props. Like I was going to do one with my family to do an example. And I took a stick and put some foil on the bottom of it and made a sword because I was going to do my myth story. I was going to model one for you on Achilles heel and do a, a little reenactment. But my family just wasn't so into it. <laughs> So, um, again, you can make very simple props. It doesn't have to be anything very elaborate. Um, and so that's another option if you want to do that, too. I know some of you made your stories with a, lot, a little bit of dialogue. So you might have a sister or brother that might would like to act it out with you. But again, you have um, those four different options to share your myth. And I can't stress enough, don't film it yet. Just start preparing. Decide which of the four things you want to do and start working on some of the illustrations or the plans for um, your filming. Okay. So that is what I have for you this week. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to email me and just keep up the good work. I'm very proud of all of you. I know it's getting harder, but stick with it. And um, I look forward to seeing you all on Wednesday. Thanks so much. Bye.